Welcome to this mini-series, an introduction to computer science and programming. Now, if you are just starting out, in this particular session, we're going to look at an interesting historical event and how it connects to computer science. We're also going to look at the language Python, how you can download it and use it in your browser and get started with coding. We're going to look at AI, artificial intelligence, and actually make your very first program, which is going to be a chatbot. Now, computer science as a subject is completely vast. It spreads out into every imaginable area of society that we can think of. But one thing we like students to do before they start coding or really getting into the theory of the subject is to think about the history and the origins and actually the impact of computer science on society. We know that the impact of computing has been huge, it is huge, and more notably, it is going to be very significant. Now some of you are watching what's unfolding behind me and you already know what it is. Now the devastating event that happened not so long ago in comparative terms has a very direct link with computer science. And you may want to pause the screen and discuss what you think that might be. So what is the link between the event, the historical event that's happening behind me, and computing? Now, on the left-hand side is a man called John von Neumann, and you'll be coming across him a lot as you study computer science. He was involved in the design of systems architecture as what we now call the CPU, the Central Processing Unit. But John von Neumann was a genius and he's standing in front of a computer that had something to do with the devastating event that we just witnessed on the screen earlier. Now, some of you may know that it was on the Maniac, which is this machine, one of the early computers that is behind him in the picture, that he actually entered the calculations required for the atomic bomb. And it was that that we were seeing. It was the atomic bomb which was blowing up over Hiroshima and obviously causing the devastation that we saw. Now what am I saying? Am I saying that John von Neumann was responsible for the death of thousands of people? Not really. Life is more complex than that. But what I am saying is that information is power and actually skills, the skills that you will acquire as a computer scientist, as a programmer, are powerful skills. And one of the things that you really need to think about is how you will use your power. You can use it for extreme devastation, or you can use it for good. There's several apps in the world that are being used for good, and you can, in fact, change the world for good. So even as you start your journey on programming, it'd be a good idea to be thinking about something that you could do using your skills that would help people and that would change the world in a good way. So let's get started with Python. And before we actually open up Python in the browser, let's have a look on a random job site for what the opportunities are and what the pay is for Python. Suppose you were on a temporary contract. You can see scrolling down here, it's not bad at all. So there's lots of different things that you can do with Python as a language. It can be used on the web, along with frameworks like Django and Flask. You can use it for games, but significantly, especially in this day and age, it's being used for machine learning and artificial intelligence, which is a huge discipline. So in the browser, we're going to start by using Python in an online IDE. And we're going to use Repl.it. Now, we're going to be using the version 3, so Python 3. So you click on Start Coding and Python, and it should automatically default to the Python 3. Now, here we are in the IDE. On the left-hand side is where you actually type in your instructions. And on the right-hand side, if you click this green button here which says Run, it produces an output, or it executes your instructions. So anything I type in here 
such as welcome to my chatbot and press run is produced as an output on the screen. Now, to begin with a chatbot is quite simple and we're going to do that in a minute but I do want to first introduce you to this simple command which is called the print command and when we say print in programming we don't mean print to a printer or print to a physical paper we just mean whatever I type here is output to the screen and you can notice the syntax and how it how it works like that Now some of you have heard of the game Fortnite and forget Fortnite, you can think of any application such as Facebook or a little game that you play or even a desktop application like PowerPoint. Anything like this takes more than a line of code or even a few lines of code to produce. It's sometimes thousands and thousands of lines of code. So when you think about that, one of the things that you need to understand about programming is that everything is divided up into things that we're going to call in, in Python functions. Now a function is a way of making a manageable organized module into which you put your code. So if you had a login screen it might go into a login function. If you had another sign up screen all the sign up code would go into the sign up function. So we're going to start using functions and we do that by typing the word def define and we can call the function anything we want, such as chatbot. Now, I've called this chatbot, and you note that I have a open bracket, close bracket, and a colon. Now, the syntax of a language is very much, you could think of it like the grammar of a language, just like I say that in English, and I have a full stop at the end and a capital letter at the front, in the same way, the syntax of a language such as Python is very important. If you miss out a dot or a bracket, something is not going to work. It's going to break. Secondly, there's a thing called indentation. Indentation, you'd imagine, is just, you know, indenting something. But in Python, it is absolutely crucial. In fact, indentation, it has a meaning. And what it means is it's something to do with belonging. Let me explain that. If I type something here, you can see that what I've typed is indented inside the function chatbot. I could remove the indent and put it here and everything would stop working. So when I put something, by, I can actually use the space bar to indent it or press tab, which is just beneath your one on your keyboard. So tab, indents it just the right amount and when I've indented something what it does or it tells Python that this statement belongs inside the chatbot function. So if I run this you'll see that nothing happens and the reason for that is that I haven't called that's how we talk about um, executing a function in, in, in programming we haven't called the function. So right at the bottom not indented because I don't want it to be part of the function right at the bottom I've written chatbot and I've called this function which will now be executed so in here I could write other things all of these things which I print will be oops, printed or output to the screen so I've used a function now you can use several different functions in a program and we're going to be looking at that. But today, we're just going to use one function, a chatbot function, and produce your entire chatbot using this capability. Now to finalize our little chatbot and do something a bit more useful with it, we need to understand uh, a few key concepts. One of them is just to know what a program is. Now a program, the very simplest definition of a program, is that a program is a sequence of instructions the computer executes them and that's what you see on the screen. So we're going to look at some of those keywords and do pause the screen and read through these. It's quite interesting to know that the DNA 
inside a virus, for instance the coronavirus, or inside your cells, is actually referred to as the DNA code. And this is just a, a bit of trivia that you might want to look up and think about. Now the anatomy of a typical program is something that has three components to it. Input, processing and output. So just think about that when you write any program. It's something goes in into a variable. We're going to learn about what variables are. It's processed and it's output, just like a human brain or how a human works. Now, the amazing little thing that you need to learn about, this is the last thing we're going to look at to really make your chatbot functional and to understand memory and how it works, is this thing called a variable. Now, a variable in computer science is simply something, a little thing, a, a memory location. You could think of it like a box that stores a value. And why don't you close your eyes and see if you can tell me what the two numbers on the screen were. Now, if you have a memory, which you probably do, you'll probably say 15 and 47. And something to consider is how did your brain, which is a lump of flesh, how did it remember those numbers? Now the brain is still a mystery. We understand some of it, not all of it, but we can tell you how computers remember. So a variable is something that we use in programming. It's like a storage box that stores a value. And this value can be a string value. String means text. It could be an integer. An integer is a whole number. And we're gonna look at those different types of variables in a preceding lesson. So remember that, and using that knowledge that we just talked about, variables, we're gonna now extend the chatbot to actually create some variables and create what resembles an artificially intelligent chatbot. Now with our newfound knowledge on variables, we're gonna actually extend our little chatbot, which doesn't do anything interesting, and use some variables. Now, like we said, a variable is something that stores a value and something you might want to ask a user if you're pretending to be a chatbot is what is your name? So I'm going to just call the variable name. It could be, you could call it anything. You call it my name or just name or N. So let's call it name and we type in this command. We say input and you can see that it comes up with a, a prompt. It gives us um, a hint as to what we could type, but I'm just going to type it. I can say, what's your name? Now, this is quite interesting. If I press play, you'll see that my chatbot says, I am a chatbot. What is your name? And I could actually put in my name and I could write, my name is Mrs. Marvin. And what happens there? It doesn't do anything interesting. But has it remembered, because remember variables are about memory, has it remembered my name? And one way you could check that is like so. You could type in print. Well, we could say, nice to meet you, comma. And over there, I'm going to have a comma and write the name of the variable. So whatever this variable was, I'm going to write here. Now watch this. What is your name? I'm going to write something completely confounding. I'm going to say, my name is Mrs. Mouse. And it says, nice to meet you, Mrs. Mouse. So it's actually remembered what I typed in and it's printed that to the screen. So this is beginning to resemble something which is slightly intelligent. Now, you could extend this program. You could write movie, favorite movie. And then I could write nice movie. And I could even make this slightly more interesting. I could add the name at the front. So I could say name. And you can see how this is developing. So it says, what's your name? I put in a name. Uh, nice to meet you, Snoopy. Favorite movie, Snoopy. And it says, Snoopy, nice movie, Snoopy. So it's quite interesting. And you can develop this how you want. Now, we are going to get into much more complex things like if statements and loops. But for now, focus on these basic things, on the creation of a function, on the creation of a variable, and producing a basic script like this, which is going to put you on very good stead. Now, just to end, something for you to think about. 
Artificial intelligence, or AI, is absolutely huge at the moment. It's on um, every single entrepreneurial company that you can think of is really working in this field. Now, Alan Turing, he came up with something which was called the Turing test. And the Turing test is a very interesting uh, concept. It's essentially saying, are you able to produce a program or something? It could be a robot, it could be a chatbot that is so, so clever, so intelligent, that it is indistinguishable from a human being. And that's called the Turing test. So there's many different um, attempts that have been made, but one of the questions that you need to ask yourself is, do you think that in the future, or even now, computers will ever be able to actually think for themselves? Or is that something restricted, or confined, gifted to humans? Now, my personal opinion is no. And I've had a, a very clever uh, student recently write a EPQ thesis, and he came to a different conclusion. So these are things that you want to think about for yourself. Will computers ever be truly intelligent? So far, they're artificially intelligent, and they do a lot to resemble um, what intelligence looks like. There have been many developments in AI, um, such as with the game Go, which is much more complex. It has many more permutations than chess, and it's actually a computer has managed to beat a human being. So that's a type of intelligence, but it's different from emotional intelligence or thinking. This PowerPoint is available to you. You should be able to use it to extend your knowledge for the session. You might want to pause the screen and try making this or using this screen and the code in the screen to extend your chatbot. But your main task is simply to extend the chatbot and use the tools and the features and some of the concepts that we used today.